Hey everybody, this is Mrs. Clark, and today I'm going to show you how to code your own pixel art so when you're finished, you have this adorable ice cream cone that says you're cool. Great for Valentine's Day or for summer. So um, if you want to follow along, you can get this exact template by clicking on the link in the description below. But this video should also help you if you have your own pixel art already made and your own questions. It'll help you code your own work as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is come up to the percentage and change it to 75% so that I can see everything on one screen. The next step is to click on the question box and write my questions. You can do that just by clicking and typing and then you can also adjust the font and the font color if you want to and slide this out to make the question box bigger or smaller. So go ahead and write your questions and answer them. Now we're going to talk about the actual coding. We are only going to have to write nine codes because we're coding each of these answer boxes. And that's it. When you code, you're telling the computer two things. You need to tell the computer what box you're talking about, and you need to tell the computer what needs to be in that box for your code to work. In other words, the answer to your question. When I say you need to tell the computer what box you're talking about, every single box or pixel on this spreadsheet has a name. And you name the box by the column and row that it's in. When you click on a box, the column up here is going to darken to show you what column it is. And then the rows over here will darken to show you what row or rows it is as well. So let's talk about the name of these boxes. This box is column B, and it is rows four, five, six, and seven, because it's a big box, but when you're naming it, you use the first number, which is four. Therefore, this box is B4, column B, row four. This box is column B, row eight. This box is B12, B16, B20. So that's going to be part of the code, telling the computer the column and row of the box that you're actually coding. And then the second thing you tell the computer is the answer to your question, 9, 12, February, Mercury, etc. With that being said, let's look at the actual code. It's all the things I was just talking about, plus a couple symbols. Here's the code. I recommend writing it down. The code or the custom formula is equals dollar sign column dollar sign row equals answer. For example, the code for this box is going to be equals dollar sign B dollar sign four equals nine. This one will be equals dollar sign B dollar sign eight equals 12. This one equals dollar sign B dollar sign 12 equals February. And if the answer is a word, you have to put it in quotes. I'll show you that in a sec. Let's go ahead and start coding. Click on the box you actually want to start with and open the coding window. Come up to format. If you don't have this window, click here or menu. Click on conditional formatting. We'll keep this window up the whole time, but if you lose it, that's how you get back in. It's the same way we just did. Here it is, and you can see that it's already put a color in this box, so it knows that this is the box that we're coding, which is good. I always start at the bottom. First thing I do is I tell the computer what color I want it to turn, and I have to pick colors from my picture. They're usually all up here, but if you're not sure, you can always click on the picture and find the color. I want to do the main like aqua color of the ice cream and I think it's that one but you can always check so click and then just see where it is it's the first custom color okay um, before I go back I do want to click back on that nine so I know that this is the box I'm coding and now that I was just looking at it I can click and locate that color I accidentally changed the font color. I actually don't want to do that. Keep it a black. I meant to change the paint bucket. There we go. So it, cha it changed to the color I want. Next step is to write the code. Come up to format cells if, click and scroll down to custom formula is. A box will appear underneath. That's where you're going to write that code we were just looking at. Telling the computer the column and row of this box so it knows what box we're talking about. And also telling the computer that it needs to have a nine in it in order for the code to activate. Equals dollar sign B, that's the column, dollar sign four, that's the row, equals nine, that's the answer. Keep this window open, but I'm gonna close it just to show you real quick that this code is technically done. I told the computer if there's a nine in that box, turn it aqua, and if there's something else in that box, don't. So it worked. The code is done. We're not gonna have to write a code for these pixels. What we're gonna do instead is 
having this code open, we're just going to attach some of the aqua from the ice cream so that when this box turns aqua, they do also. And that is what this last step appears for. It's called apply to range. And it's basically saying, you wrote the code, now what range of pixels do you want to be part of that code? Right now it has B4 to B7, which is this box. And I wanna add on some of the other ones. You do that by clicking here. A window will pop up, slide it over here so you can still kind of see that nine box. And we are going to click on some of the aqua in the ice cream and in the words. First, I need to hold down a button on my computer. That button is control. It's usually in the bottom left-hand corner. That allows me to not lose things I've already clicked on, especially that nine box. So as I'm adding pixels, it can group them all because I'm holding down control. If you have a Mac, hold down command. I am clicking on just aqua from the ice cream cone. If I did click on one of those dark blues and turned it aqua, it's not that big of a deal. It's still ice cream, it would look fine. But if I clicked on one of those, for example, I would just click again to get rid of that so that it's not part of the selection. We'll take some of the aqua from the words. If you uh, mix up the blues in the words, it will not matter at all because that color is just for fun. I'm not doing all of the aqua right now because I have more questions than colors. So I did about half of it and now I'm going to lift up on control and I need to do three steps to finish. Step one is to click OK on the range. Step two, done on the code. Step three is very important and easy to forget, so don't forget it. Come up to the paint bucket and click reset. Now it's done, but everything is selected, so just click anywhere else. And we'll come up to this nine box, delete the nine by hitting delete or backspace, and it disappears. Put the nine back in, and it won't work until you click off of it, but there we go. Now we don't want to keep that nine in there for now because we want our ice cream to be disappearing in front of our eyes so we don't get confused about how much we've done. Okay, we're gonna do our next color. And from now on, I'm gonna do all of the color because there are now eight questions left and there are eight colors, dark brown, brown, light brown, lightest brown, and then our four blue aquas. So I only had to, um, split up the aqua one time from here on out every code I do I'm going to do the entire color click on the next box that you want to code and click add another rule we'll start at the bottom again and we are going to choose our color I want to do the darkest brown in the ice cream cone and I think it's that one if you ever want to check it's super easy just to check here but then click back on the box you're actually coding, which will always be an answer box. Pick your color. Now we're going to write our code. Custom formula is equals dollar sign B, that's the column of this box, dollar sign eight, that's the row of this box, equals 12, that's the answer. Code is technically done. Now I'm going to click apply to range, slide this over, Hold down control, make sure I don't lose that 12 box there or the B8 to B11. I want that stayed in there or kept in there. And I'm going to click on all of the dark browns in the ice cream cone. This is another one where if I were to mess up and click like a lighter brown, it would still look like an ice cream cone. It would be fine. Lift up on control and do your three steps. Okay, done. And then don't forget to reset the paint bucket. That code is done, but everything's selected. So click anywhere else, come back to the 12, hit delete or backspace, and now test both of them. You have to click off of it for it to activate. We've got a full picture here. Go back through, delete, but notice that the codes are still there over on the right. So we didn't delete those. All right, click on your next box to code. And click add another rule. I'm going to do the darkest aqua color. Writing our code, telling the computer the column and row of that box and that it needs to have the word February in it. B and then 12 is the row equals February. I wanna show you something. Notice it turned white. That's because the code is incorrect. February is a word, and if your answer is a word, you have to do one more step.
You have to put quotation marks around the word. Turns dark aqua to show me that it's now correct. So if it's a number like nine or 12, like before, you don't have to do this. If your answer is a word, you do have to put quotation marks around it, just like dialogue in a book. Now I clicked apply to range and I'm going to hold down control so that February box stays selected and click on all the dark aqua in the ice cream cone and in the letters. If you have two next to each other like this, you can click and drag to make uh, to select more than one. And I didn't do it very well, so let me show you up here. Click and then drag, and I can do three at once. And that's just, it can be a little bit quicker. And something I wanna let you know is that when you're starting out, it's very, very normal to make mistakes or to accidentally click somewhere and then you lose everything you selected and you have to start again. This is a really great project for perseverance and patience because it just helps you with those skills because it might be a little bit challenging at first, but then it will get easy and you'll feel really good about yourself if you stick with it. So definitely stick with it and it is absolutely worth it to learn this really cool skill. All right, there's all my dark aqua, I think anyways. Um, Lift up on control and do your three steps. Okay on the range, done on the code, and then we reset the paint bucket. Click literally anywhere else, delete February, and put it back. And there's our dark aqua. Now we're going to do, see, I don't want to do this color yet because then all of the words will appear, and I kind of want the words to be surprised. Maybe I'll do, ooh, I'll do the lightest aqua just that highlight there. So I've been messing around with this, so I have to remember to click on the box I actually want to code, which is Mercury box, and click add another rule. And now I will come down to the paint bucket and find that lightest aqua color and click on it. Next, I'm going to write my code telling the computer the column and row of that Mercury box equals dollar sign B, that's the column, dollar sign 16, that's the row, equals mercury. And I'm putting mercury in quotation marks because it's a word. It turned light aqua to show me that the code is correct. Sliding our range over and holding down control, I'm going to click on all of the light aqua in the ice cream cone. And one other thing I wanna tell you is there's another video called Pixel Art Common Mistakes and How to Fix Them. So if you find yourself making mistakes, that's super normal and you can watch that video and it'll help you. It's in my pixel art playlist, but it's also over here underneath this window. I have five colors left and I have five questions left. I'm going to keep going. I'll speed up the video now and then we'll check in at the end and see how it looks.
when you are finished, all the pixels should be gone. You can see that I left one there. To fix that, you're going to cycle through until you find that color. There it is. Open that code. Come up to apply to range and click add another range. It's at the bottom. Hold down control and click on the pixel you left out and then do your three steps. Okay, done and reset. My troubleshooting video does go into that with more detail. Now let's close the coding window and we're going to test it out. And there it is. So remember to check out the troubleshooting video if you need help with anything and stick with it because this is a really fun skill to learn. And I hope you have fun with this project.